What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Hardcore Fab Shop. Well, we'll be back to the Hardcore Fab Shop here in a second. But first, we're going out to Salvage Yard and we are going to get our new front axle for our hookers and blow build. This one's going to be something a little different, so you guys are going to want to stick around and check this out because I haven't seen anybody else do this yet, so we'll see how it goes. So I've decided that I'm going to just build or put together a front axle for the truck. And the reason I'm doing that is because, first of all, if I find an old axle that is going to be something out of a F1 or something like that, you've got to do a disc brake conversion kit on it, or at least I feel like I do to be able to drive it 80 miles an hour down the road all the way to Vegas. And I'm also going to have to have some kind of conversion to get it over to eight lugs so that I can put a bud wheel on the front of it and then probably an adapter from eight lug to the bud wheel because that's going to be a lot of spacing to get that far away from the rotor and everything to clear everything so after thinking about all that and then really looking at all those axles like that a lot of them are kind of weak and small and all that kind of stuff i mean i put one like that in old crow and it's fine in there but i don't have the same kind of feel with the truck in my opinion anyways the front axle i think it would just seem small in there i don't know how else to say it i'm gonna have that lot bigger wheel and tire on the back and the whole truck just in itself seems like a bigger truck and having the record boom on the back and everything is going to also make it seem like it's a bigger truck and then to have this kind of a small punier looking axle up there in the front i think it just doesn't go so what I'm gonna do is I actually wanna just take and I'm gonna find a four wheel drive front axle, preferably one that's jacked up with the center sections blowed out of it or whatever. Somebody blew the spider gears out or blew the ring of pinion out or whatever. So the cost will be cheaper to begin with, of course, but then I'm just gonna take and cut the center section clear out of it. And I think if I take that out and just put a new tube back in there, I should be golden. I don't know why it wouldn't work. I know I'm going to have to do something with the bearings out there on the end. Well, yeah, I'm going to have to have something out there because the stub axle that goes through the hub out the end is going to keep all the grease in and it's going to keep dirt and shit out of there from getting up inside the where all the bearings and stuff are at. So I may have to cut the end of a stub, a stub axle off and that's not that big of a deal. I can make that look good and keep that in there. But that's going to give us our disc brakes that's going to actually give us a stronger axle i believe in the end and it's already going to have a steering arm sticking out there if i get one off of a chevy is what i was thinking then it'll have the arm out there like i need to be able to steer it so it just kind of all sounds like a win-win-win to me so that's what i'm going out to salvage yard to try to find and i guess we'll just see if it works i don't know only one way to find out i looked around the internet i couldn't find anybody else that did it so Maybe there's a reason for that and I'm gonna learn it. And I guess I'll share that with you guys when I do. But in my mind, it seems like it ought to be fine. So let's go see what happens. All right, so I got out here at Piper's Auto Salvage and told them what I was needing. They sent me down this tree row here because this whole entire tree row is clear full of axles and parts and pieces of axles and things like that. And I got all the way down here to the end, of course, and found what I was looking for. So I think it's a 73 through 87 Chevy pickup three quarter ton i think the only thing that's missing on this is the calipers so probably get aftermarket reman calipers or whatever anyways so he went to go grab the loader and they're over here in this pile I'll get you over here where you can see them it's like nine o'clock in the morning ten o'clock and it's already like 95 or 100 or something almost so that white bumper right there that's a 73 387 bumper and attached to that is a section of the frame on the front of the truck and then of course there's a front end hanging there underneath it so he's got the loader coming now i can hear it coming get this thing scooped out of here and get our axle off and get back to town and start cutting
right, we made her back to the shop. Now I guess it's time to get this thing stripped down. I'm gonna go ahead and try to save as many parts and pieces out of here that I'm not gonna use and return them back to Pipers because they gave me a smoking deal on this thing. So I might as well try to return anything that I'm not gonna use so they can sell it to someone else. So I'm gonna strip everything off the ends, pull the axles out, and I'll save the inside axles for them. I gotta cut those outer ones off. But I'm gonna go ahead and just probably cut the tubes off right here on the center section. They can have the whole entire center section back. So I guess it's time to get started doing that. Before I can do any of that though, I'm gonna have to make a bunch of noise by turning the fans on and open the door back up. So I guess we're gonna go to time lapse on this one. <laughs> subscriber mark and when we do we are still planning on giving away a t-shirt like this hardcore fab OG hookers and blow shirt or any of the t-shirts from our teespring store there will be a link to our teespring store in the description below so keep commenting giving us those thumbs up sharing the video and if you haven't subscribed yet please do so because you must be a subscriber to win we will be choosing the winner from the comment section once we hit 7,000 subscribers and that could happen on this video good luck well while i was dealing with some of the crusty rusty stuff on this thing and some messed up threads on one of the spindles i had some time to think about a few things now i've already got a couple ideas to make this scenario better the first one being take our spindle this is the spindle that bolts right here on the end of the knuckle rather than having to cut off an axle for this thing to fill this hole i think i'm just going to cut a little plug out and stick it on there and weld it in so it's going to accomplish the same thing we're going to keep the grease in the dirt out so that's going to be a better scenario there the other thing that i was thinking about too is they actually made some two-wheel drive jeeps now they would have had just a tube right through here they had no center section in them because they're two-wheel drive they had all the suspension brackets and everything the same as a regular jeep but if i had taken the brackets off there and just had the regular tube there it would be basically the exact same thing that i'm getting ready to build so if i had found one of those that had knuckles on it that was say like for a dana 44 which this is a dana 44 that i got here right now i could take all the outer parts and pieces off of it from the knuckle out and i could put those on the jeep axle that would give me my eight lugs that i needed for the bud wheels the bolt to that would give me my disc brakes and on my steering arm and everything like that from the chevy which makes it easy to find parts for and pieces everywhere for and accomplish everything that i'm getting ready to do now so just a little food for thought for you guys if you happen to see one of those out there laying around and think that's worthless that might actually be something worth grabbing a hold of and it's definitely something i'm going to try to start hoarding from now on if i happen to see any so all right, well, I guess I'll get the cab and everything slid back here on the table so I can get this thing up there on the table and have a nice, flat, easy place to work so I can try to get this thing stuck back together and have everything all true and straight. So get that done and I'll show you what I'm doing next.
All right, let me see if I can catch you guys up here. So you see me take the brackets off and clean everything up. That's a given, we have to do that. I did, however, leave this spring perch on here and we've got the spring perch that's mounted over here and the center section. So I was using both of those to align the axle with the table. So I know that it's square up and down. And then I also took the weight off the housing at that point so that I could set these pieces of square tubing in here, one on each side. And I put those in there and I measured across from square tubing to square tubing on both sides of the axle to make sure that those were square with each other in parallel. And then I tacked those on and welded those to the C out there on the end. So I think what that's going to allow me to do now is to cut this piece out here. I can slide my new tube over the top. I'm gonna to leave these inside the old one. It's just gonna give it more strength. And I'll be able to slide them clear up here to the ends of these knuckles on both sides and weld it on. So if all goes well, that should allow me to square everything back up off of these pieces of square tubing. And that'll take care of anything like this. And then that also keeps it from rocking one way or the other this direction as well. So it's not probably the best scenario, but it's the best scenario with what I've got laying here and what I can do today. So I'm just gonna go for it. I think it'll be fine. I guess I got one more measurement I should actually probably do as well, and that is to get an angle of what each one of these ball joints is sitting at so that I can make sure that I don't have any dipping in the middle or anything like that. So I'm going to get that measurement. I'm just going to write it on the table and we'll be good to go. converted to two-wheel drive solid front axle for our truck and I couldn't be happier with it. It's got a nice big beefy looking tube there and it's got our disc brakes on the outside of it. It's got our eight lugs on it. It's going to have some huge wheel bearings and everything in there. It's already got our steering arm, all the stuff that I was after. It's already right here. Now I'm going to have to go ahead and freshen up all that stuff when it comes time to actually do final assembly on this thing. But for now, I just stuck everything together so that we could make this thing a roller and we could get started working on our suspension for the front of it. And that's what I'm going to be doing in our next video, working on some of the cantilever air ride stuff that I want to do on the front of this thing. I literally just got some new parts in, so I had to mock everything back up on the truck here and show you guys what it's going to look like. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and give a shout out to another deserving YouTube channel. And for this one, I've got you guys Ginger Garage. He's got a bunch of cool automotive stuff going on over there with a bunch of different makes and models. But the one that really does it for me personally is he's got a Lodestar over there. I don't know if you guys haven't figured that out or not yet. I kind of have a thing for Lodestars. So I need to build one, get it out of my system. But anyways, go over, check out Ginger Auto. Give him some love. Hit the thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And I guess if you stuck around this long, you deserve a sneak peek of some stuff that I just got on the truck. So what do you guys think? Is that badass or what? I'm excited now, so 
you get started mocking up the rest of the suspension so we can actually get this stuff bolted in place where it's gonna go. Well, I guess that's all I got for you guys on this one. I'll see you on the next one.